tonight. From State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It's week four of the NFL preseason on EA Sports. Coverage of the NFL takes us to the Valley of the Sun at State Farm Stadium here in Glendale. So this was the scene a moment ago. The Cardinals emerging from their tunnel, and we are ready for football as the Cards get set to match up with the Denver Broncos. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at this Cardinal team as they get ready here. They come in 0-3 and in desperate, desperate need of a win. And as a team, you start to feel a little bit snake bit. They need something good to happen right now so they know it's not just them. They think they have the makings of a good team. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, an early season tilt. And when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet. And both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. And this carries into the end zone. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. The Cardinals now getting set to go offensively, and it'll be the dual threat quarterback, Kyler Murray, leading the way. I still remember being in Indianapolis at the Combine when the result of Kyler Murray's height was announced. And when the tape measure showed him at a little bit above 5'10", all doubts went out the window, and rightly so. The Cardinals went 5'10 and one with him last year, but he was the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. This guy can make great plays with his arm, can scoot with his feet, and has motivated this team and has him on a really good upward trajectory. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. It's a gain of a good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. And yeah, they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, there's someone who's running the football with a big smile on his face, and that's Kenyon Drake. Because you remember last year, he was in Miami, wasn't getting many carries, not a lot of success, but in midseason, ended up in Arizona and became a huge weapon for the Cardinals. Eight touchdowns the second half of the season, utilized really well. Big-time skilled player who can run it and catch it out of the backfield. He has finally found a home and a place for his talents. On second down, it's Drake. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. From the gun, Murray. It's Williams on the catch. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. A two-yard. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Four yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Charles, 54 yards, I'm surprised that came up short. I would agree with that one because normally, if he misses, it's accuracy, not length, because he has plenty of leg for that. But maybe it's like I hit my golf shot, you know? Maybe it's like my wedge, you know, when you chili dip and you hit the ground ahead of it, sometimes that'll shorten your distance as well. 
They'll run. This is Melvin Jordan. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. In the offseason, Melvin Gordon made the move over from the Los Angeles Chargers to the Denver Broncos. He stayed in the AFC West, and now he has a mission to get back to being mentioned as one of the top backs in the league with a young quarterback, Drew Locke, there. Expect him to catch a ton of passes out of the backfield and use his ability in open space to make people miss. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield stripe. Devon Kennard just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Locks throw caught by Sutton. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 30. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. And the well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now the first carry here for Philip Lindsay and taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. I know people see Philip Lindsay's role in Denver changing a bit with the arrival of Melvin Gordon, but I think Gordon's going to be more of an enhancement for Lindsay. Maybe he won't carry it as often, but now he'll be much more effective as a two-headed monster in the backfield. Both of them can run it inside, get to the perimeter, and catch the ball in the backfield and move the sticks. That is caught inside the five. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time, and a first down. Denver. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Brandon McManus to kick off for Denver. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Takes this about five yards deep. And this will be a touchback. No return from Isabella. At their own. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. First and 10 at the 39-yard line. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Broncos seven, Cardinals nothing. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and ten. Now Hundley, this will be his first throw off the bench. Open man is Cantrell. 
Three yards the gain there, second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. The pass complete to Hakeem Butler. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 41-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. The 41-yard line. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. So the ball moves from their own 41 to the other 41 here for first and 10. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. Busting through contact. Just wasn't a huge hole there for him to operate. Stopped just inside the 35-yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Throwing, Hundley, open man, completes it to Butler. Touchdown, Cardinals! Hakeem Butler, 34 yards! And the Cardinals are just an extra point away from tying this game. And a nice job by him to catch the slant and then navigate and break free. And receivers love slant routes because it gets the ball in their hands so quickly and oftentimes on the move. And when they're on the move like that, then they get to use their best asset, which is usually their speed. And their speed sometimes, like this instance, can take them into the end zone. Zane Gonzalez on for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. A drive that time of six plays, and the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Taking it at about the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Over first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. He'll find Royce Freeman, the running back. And he's brought down after a very nice game. The end result, 21 yards. First down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Here's the third-year man from Oregon. It's Royce Freeman. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. There on the stop that time, Trevon Coley. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. In. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 39. It's a first down on a gain of 10. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. Now a play fake here on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. Here's second and ten. And that is 
is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. By the way, as we expected, most of the starting units out here in the second quarter. So get your two deep, your three deep, your four deep ready for this one. If you have a particular favorite who wasn't a high draft pick or is an undrafted free agent trying to make the team, this is the time to watch him play and give it his best shot because most of the starters, you're exactly right. They'll be out of the game watching the rest of the way. And he hits his target, Deshaun Hamilton. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 17-yard line. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. 22 yards. Every now and then I can speak from experience because I do know as a defender, it is awfully hard to stay with your man on these crossing routes because even if you don't get picked, there's a danger of being picked either by one of their receivers or maybe by your own defender. And on that play, that worked quite well. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now Gordon on first down. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Let's hope it's not anything that'll keep him out of the opener. We'll be right back. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. They'll look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Deshaun Hamilton there to make the grab. And the Broncos have taken the lead. He's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. Brandon McManus to kick off for Denver. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Now Hundley. Finds the open target, Arnold. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now back to throw. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. Brett Hundley sacked. Now the Broncos are gonna call the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. And that will be incomplete. Andy On fourth down, here's Andy Leon to kick it away. And a 
nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. They'll start on the ground. This is Gordon on first down. Oh, and this is going to wind up a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your putter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt, and if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. The football going back over to Arizona now and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Not much there. Only a yard. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Looking to throw again on second down. Hundley, this one complete to the running back, Chase Edmonds. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. That's complete to Edmonds, his running back. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Open man, Butler complete. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Four yards the pickup, first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Cardinals got to go quickly. Hustling to the line. This to Arnold on the short pass. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Third and six. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He'll get this to his running back, Edmonds. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Looking for the end zone. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. Incomplete. Out of the end zone. Second and ten now from the 27. Sack. They push him back to the 34. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. So we are halfway through here in the final week of the preseason. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. One more half of preseason football to go. And then all eyes will look ahead to one week from tonight, the annual NFL kickoff game. And that promises to be a dandy. In our game, the starters are long gone. But still some intrigue to see guys trying to make a late roster push as we get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Cardinals take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. 
Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. See if they do just that. At the 31-yard line. They keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon. And he will take this all the way down to the Cardinals' 37-yard line. He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. They toss to Freeman. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. So now second half week for the preseason, all the starters, they departed after one quarter. Some folks may call this garbage time, but don't tell that to the guys that are out there now. No, I would agree with that totally because there's still jobs to be won or lost during this portion of the game. This final opportunity for them to make a positive impression. From the 29, Driscoll, that one into the hands of Hamilton. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. And the Broncos first down. of six but that play was the very definition of fast quick and in a hurry suddenly he was there in a blink of an eye that happened fast and a big sack protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. complete to Hamilton and he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five first and goal that one goes for 24 yards well that certainly has to feel good it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit sometimes I think in the huddle the quarterback just says hey who's gonna make a play for me I just need something right here and the end result there nice first down drive keeps moving circle that drive because that might be one to remember well executed to give them a little cushion well let's take it into the boxing ring you talk about them commanding it keeping the fight where they wanted to whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab 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 and finally the haymaker to put that drive away now mcmanus for the extra point And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So that drives seven plays in length. And the final act came from Royce Freeman on the touchdown run. Brandon McManus to kick off for Denver. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. 
And that's fielded on the back line of the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Incomplete. Well, coming into this one, we expected that this offense would have trouble with this defense, and that's exactly the way that this game has gone. Pressure in his face. Coverage downfield has been tight. That led to another incompletion. This defense, they're exactly who we thought they were coming into this one. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Here's the veteran punter Lee as he sends this one away. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So the Broncos coming out now. And Charles, you'd have to think this is where you want to start taking some time off the clock. Oh, definitely, because you got the lead, right? You take a good look up there and you say, okay, what do we need to do here? Well, you're not in full-out protect mode. You want to make sure you run it, throw it safe, take some time off, and eat it up. They'll indeed run here right off the bat. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? On second and 11 now. Driscoll, man open, that's Juwan Winfrey. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. First down. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. A gain of 11 on the play. First down, Broncos. Welcome back to the desert. We're in Glendale. It's Bronco football, and they also have the lead here as we get set for the fourth. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. This time it's Gordon. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And that one got tipped. It's kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that in just about every position. And sometimes, if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. 
some boos coming down right now from this home crowd after that call. Yeah, and that was because of the pass interference call, but for a second there, I thought maybe they'd gotten a look at my uh, appearance as Othello in the high school play. <laughs> you, you were Othello? Not a good one, let me tell you. knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. They'll drop the throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Albert O. Albert Okule Buna was the target there. And it's third down. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there. Tried to force it in. That when he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him. They tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. The kick by McManus is good. And that will make this now a 15-point advantage. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Cardinals offense ready to set up shop. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this job. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my speed. Special, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. The Cardinals on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 10 first down, Arizona. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. The throw over the middle, taken in. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 39. 15 yards on the play, first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw again. Over the middle, complete. That's Arnold. And yeah, they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. So the Cardinals, they've got the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. A throw down the field, caught by his running back. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. 11 more on that one, and another first down. This is Butler making the catch. 
This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Meanwhile, this one knocked down in the backfield. It's incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it with Edmonds. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They keep the game alive, and this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, uh, yeah, you know. It doesn't feel right. Exactly. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Here's second and five now from the 37. to the ground this time with Freeman now the cards gonna call another timeout their second as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth the cards going nickel an extra defensive back out there now on third down They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. The Cardinals forced to burn their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. It happened in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. And it's third down. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game. No turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. 
Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Glendale.